the Ohio High School Athletic Association. This is our parent meeting for the 2021-2022 school year. We welcome you. Thanks for coming. The purpose of our meeting is to discuss about Ohio High School Athletic Association, Interscholastic Athletics, and our beliefs. Participation in interscholastic athletics is an educational in nature and complements your school experience, fosters a sense of community, and teaches lifelong lessons of hard work, teamwork, citizenship, and discipline. It promotes a lifetime appreciation for sports and have healthy lifestyles. Participation in interscholastic athletics helps you prepare for the next level of your life as a responsible adult and productive citizen. Interscholastic athletic programs are not designed to prepare you for the next level of sports. Our other beliefs include the educational components of participation in interscholastic athletic programs makes it unique. School programs are unlike many other non-school organizations that promote free player movement, the athletic development of individual, and provide a showcase for those individuals. The basic Ohio high school rules and regulations. In regards to eligibility, eligibility rules exist to help maintain competitive balance in school sports and to provide the purpose of education-based athletics. You, as a student athlete, you are prim primarily responsible for your compliance. Besides Ohio High School Athletic Regulations, your school also has the authority to establish additional academic standards and codes of conduct. Those are found for Ashtabula Area City Schools in our student uh, athletic or our student handbook under the athletic portion. General OHSAA eligibility rules. In order to maintain eligibility, you must be officially enrolled in an Ohio high school member school, participating in accordance with state law, and you must have a biological or adoptive parent who lives in Ohio. You shall be eligible if you're competing under a false, you shall not be eligible if you're competing under a false name or have provided your school with an incorrect home address. You may not be eligible if you have been recruited to attend this school. Basically, all incoming ninth graders must have received passing grades in a minimum of four subjects in the immediately preceding grading period. All grades must be recorded in a student academic record. Scholarship standards have been waived, by the way, for the 2021-2022 school year, but schools are permitted to establish own standards. In regards to this piece, if your child struggled last year and their grades are not up to our district academic expectations for interscholastic athletics, we will be working with your child to ensure their athletic um, participation is successful and that they are becoming successful back in the classroom. So even the state of Ohio doesn't have um, They've waived those uh, criteria. Ashbury City Schools does expect that we maintain high expectations for students in the classroom. To maintain eligibility, high school students must have received passing grades in a minimum of five one credit courses or the equivalent in the meeting, immediately preceding grading period. All incoming seventh graders are eligible insofar as the scholarship bylaws, regardless of previous academic achievement. So to be, be eligible, seventh and eighth grade students must have received passing grades in a minimum of four classes in the immediate preceding grading period. Please note, scholarship standards also have been waived for this first grading period, but your school is permitted to establish their own standards. The same with the high school we will be monitoring. 
Students take college credit plus must comply with the Ohio High School Scholarship Standards. All students participating via state law that permits home educated non-public community and STEM schools to participate at public schools when their schools do not offer the sport they wish to play. They must also comply with the Ohio High School Scholarship Standards. That means that any student that is a community-based school must comply with any of the attendance or scholarship um, eligibility uh, standards. Semester and yearly grades have no effort on Ohio High School eligibility unless your school provides grades only at the end of a semester or school year pursuant to the Board of Education policy. To attempt to regain eligibility, for example, summer school grades, college credit plus, or other educational options, work permitted after the conclusion of the grading period shall not be used to bring a student into compliance with the Ohio High School Scholarship Bylaws, nor can they be used to compensate for the lack of courses taken in the preceding grading period. If you drop a course or change your schedule, it's really, really important that you contact your principal or athletic administrator to see if this affects your eligibility. The Ohio High School has no minimum grade P GPA. Thus, regarding eligibility, when the state mandated GPA is of concern, it's strictly a local matter. So our district's minimum GPA is a 2.0. No high school student will be eligible if he or she has been enrolled in high school for more than eight semesters. No, high, no seventh or eighth grade student will be eligible if he or she has been enrolled in seventh or eighth grade for more than, semest more than four semesters. That means two years of junior high only. High school students will be ineligible whenever they hit 20 years old. Seventh and eighth grade students who turn 15 before August 1st are also ineligible for seventh and eighth grade sports, but may be eligible to participate in high school athletics. You will be subject to a period of ineligibility if you are a member of a school team competing on a non-school team in the same sport during your school team season. For example, if you're on club soccer during the school season. So you can't be doing a um, team sport and non-school team club during the same time. Coaches and schools cannot require that you participate in an open gym or facility or in conditioning or instructional program. Violations of this regulation will result in penalties. So basically, you are, it's not mandatory outside of the non-season. There are certain restrictions regarding tryouts, practices, and competitions with non-school teams before, during, and after the school season. There are also restrictions for instruction you can receive from school coaches outside of your season um, in an Ohio high school team sport, baseball, basketball, field hockey, football, ice hockey, lacrosse, soccer, softball, and volleyball, and some OHS individual sports such as cross country track and wrestling. There are no restrictions for instruction you can receive from school coaches outside of your season on individual sports. And those individual sports are bowling, cross country, golf, gymnastics, swimming, diving and tennis, track and field, and wrestling. You could lose your um, amateur status or forfeit your ineligibility if you compete for money or monetary compensation or capitalize on your athletic fame by receiving money, merchandise, or services or entering into an agreement with a professional team or agent. Once eligibility has been established at a member high school, a transfer into different high schools may mean that you will lose eligibility for interscholastic athletics for a period of time at your new school. For specifics on those periods of ineligibility, visit www.ohsaa.org. This regulation has several exceptions, most of which require ruling from the Ohio High School Executive Director's Office. 
Should you have transferred into Lakeside, you must ensure all paperwork has been submitted and to the Ohio High School Athletic Association and the state office has granted approval for eligibility. Full eligibility will be granted only if the exception to the Ohio High School transfer regulation has been met. And that piece can be handled with and through our athletic department office. You are not permitted to try and influence a student to transfer to your school to play with you. So, for example, Lakeside cannot reach out to other schools to get students to transfer. Likewise, your coaches are not allowed to recruit students to enroll at your school for athletic purposes. An attempt to recruit to attend your school or if you are recruited to attend this school could make you subject to a period of ineligibility and could cause penalties to the school. There are exceptions to the Ohio High School regulations. If you believe you qualify for an exception or you believe you have questions pertaining to your eligibility, please consult your school principal or athletic administrator. Ask your school principal or athletic administrator to discuss any unresolved issues with the administrators in the Ohio High School office who handle those eligibility issues. You can review all OHSAA regulations and on eligibility standards by going to our OHSA website, www.ohsaa.org. In regards to health and safety, um, before your child started their first practice, um, you must have had a physical within the last 13 months and an exam clearance must be on file in the office. All those should be on file in the office um, and never try to have those expire. Uh, they're valid for 13 months. Uh, exams taking place from May 1st to June 1st are valid for one year, plus through the end of the next school year spring season. Athletic participation forms shall be signed by a medical examiner, doctor, physician, DOMODC, MD, advanced nurse practitioner, physician assistant, the participation and parent or guardian. So they all have to be signed by those entities. In addition, you will not be eligible unless you and your parent have signed the OHSAA authorization form, the OHSA eligibility statement, and the Ohio Department of Health concussion form, and Ohio Department of Health sudden cardiac cardiac arrest form, all which must be on file at your school. Um, those forms are on file on our final forms. It's extremely important for everyone involved in school sports to recognize the potential dangers associated with concussions and to review their responsibilities in protecting student athletes. Concussions are not just a problem in football. It can happen in any sport. A concussion is a traumatic brain injury that interferes with normal functions of the brain. Dings and bells, ringers are serious brain injuries, and you do not have to have a loss of consciousness to be considered serious. Young athletes are in, at an increased risk for serious problems. In Ohio, any athlete who exhibits signs, symptoms, or behaviors Consistent with a concussion, such as loss or consciousness, headache, dizziness, confusion, balance problems, shall be immediately removed from the contest or practice and shall not return to play that same day. Therefore, the student shall not return to practice or competition until cleared with written authorization from physician or health care provider provided by the local board and in accordance with our state law. Concussions, each school is required to review its concussion management protocol with participants and their parents. So um, basically we do have a trainer and our trainer will review um, concussion uh, incidents or concussion suspected incidents and then help guide the coach, the parent, and the sport. In addition, Participants and parents must review and sign the Ohio Department of Health's concussion information sheet prior to participation and are highly encouraged to review a short presentation on concussions um, available at no cost, www.nfhslearn.com. While return to play policies are really important, very important, parents must work with school administrators, teachers in developing concussion management guidelines who have been concussed 
and are returning to the classroom, i.e. returning to learn. Some students might need some modifications to their programming, to their school day, and to their return to play um, activities. Sudden cardiac arrest is the most common cause of death among students. Student athletes, dizziness, loss of breath, and a racing heart are often symptoms that are overlooked. In many cases, recognizing the signs of cardiac trouble means student athletes can continue their athletic participation. Participants and parents are required to view the Ohio Department of Health sudden cardiac video that will be at the conclusion of this video shown by Lakeside. In addition, participants and parents must review and sign the Ohio Department of Health sudden cardiac arrest information sheet prior to participation. Ohio High School does not permit the use of any form. Oh, and going back to this, that um, signature is on uh, the, the um, final forms. Ohio High School does not permute, permit the use of any form of alcohol, tobacco, including electronic cigarettes or illegal drugs. So these are additional health and safety guidelines. Besides the health risk involved, use of any of these items will result in students being disqualified from contests and violators likely facing additional school and legal penalties. Basically, don't get involved in it, and we won't have to go down that road. Another prominent issue is the use of performance-enhancing supplements. The increased availability of these items allows students easy access to a wide variety of products aggressively marketed to include promises endorsed by faulty research claims of extraordinary weight loss, explosive power, or tremendous strength gains. It's important for parents to educate themselves about what substance their child may be using and about the potential risks involved with uneducating supplement use. Beyond performance enhancing supplements, there are additional uses related to illicit drugs such as anabol anabolic steroids and some prescription drugs used with the goal of aiding performance. Use of these drugs will result in disqualification from all interscholastic athletics. The Ohio High School website, OHSAA, provides a wealth of information to assist parents, coaches, students, and anyone interested in learning more about sports, medicine, and healthy lifestyle. In regards to sporting behavior, the Ohio High School vision is for positive sporting behavior is built on expectations. It calls for school and community, administrators, contests, officials, coaches, students, parents, and fans to strive for positive sporting behavior in everything they do by teaching the value of ethics, integrity, equity, fairness, and respect. As a student athlete, you must always remember to respect the game. By respecting the game, that means you're expected to accept the responsibility and privilege of representing your school, lakeside, and community while participating in school sports. Therefore, athletes, you are expected to treat opponents, coaches, and officials with respect. They ensure that your actions do not incite fans or other participants or attempt to embarrass, ridicule, or demean others. There is a short video at the end on parents and parent role. More on the High School Athletic Association. Um, there are um, organizations to help uh, other 814 public and non-public schools and approximately 760 7th and 8th grade schools. Your school has volunteered to become a member of the Ohio High School Athletic Association. It's one of the top ranked states in the country with over 350,000 high school students competing in 26 sanctioned sports. Many of you playing on your school teams may be the last time you'll ever participate in competitive athletics. So we want to make sure your time as a high school athletic Student athlete is meaningful and memorable. The Ohio High School initiatives, they're really wanting to establish and regulating regular season and tournament standards in order for competition to be fair and equitable, administering exceptional postseason tournaments. Other key initiatives maintain the longest serving sports medicine advisory group in the United States. Licensing and registering and training 15,000 contest officials, ensuring coaches are certified to work with student athletes through ongoing coach 
education. And they have, Ohio High School has a tradition of excellence for over 100 years with our ultimate purpose to provide lifetime values, good citizenship, academic success, ethics, and fair play in safe and sporting environments. For more information, visit the Ohio High School website, OHSAA, and follow us on Twitter, twitter.com, backslash Ohio High School OHSAA Sports, and Facebook, facebook.com, OHSAA. Have a fabulous season. Now, the next piece of our meeting today will be a, a video on the sudden cardiac arrest, and that is... regarding Lindsay's Law. This, this is the, the checkers, checkers game with grandson, grandson and granddad. Give me a moment. Sorry about that, families. It's kind, it's kind of surreal being back, back here, just thinking about it did happen like right around this area, and I haven't been on track since then. So. Caleb Perkins is a Revere High School speedster. He feels at home on the track where it seemed nothing could slow him down. But on the afternoon of March 18th, Caleb's life would hang in the balance, a day he has no memory of. I have no idea what happened that day. Caleb had just finished a very tough workout, repeat quarters, sprinting one lap around the track. After the last one, he told a teammate he felt tight, and moments later, collapsed right about here, at the finish line. Is he conscious? Uh, no, he's not. He's not responding. It was sudden cardiac arrest, and time for life or death decisions. Assistant coach Brian Rayson struggled to find a pulse. Head coach Lyle Kniep dialed 911. That's when I started administering CPR. Was he conscious at all? Uh, no. No, he was unresponsive. The coaches yelled for trainers, who made the crucial choice to grab an AED and start shocking Caleb's heart. Okay, this, this is the moment. Paramedics arrived. New shock delivered. Used an AED again and rushed Caleb to the hospital. His coaches left to wonder, did they do enough to save the boy? Well, I mean, that was, you know, my whole concern at that point was, was for Caleb's family, his mo mother and father. It was really scary, and they were talking about a transplant at first. No heart transplant needed, but Caleb spent 19 days at the Cleveland Clinic, where doctors told his family the rapid response by coaches, trainers, and the AED saved his life. We realize how blessed we are that he has a chance to live, because we heard the statistics over and over. He should not be alive. It's just... 5%. It was kind of a perfect storm of things where everybody kind of came together for Caleb. Doctors found scarring at the bottom of Caleb's heart, diagnosed him with cardiomyopathy, and a defibrillator was implanted in his chest to keep his heart in rhythm. For now, no sports for the Revere athlete, but he's promising to get back on this track, grateful for his second chance at life. I'm not usually somebody who takes no for an answer, so I'm going to fight. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get back out there as soon as possible. In Bath, Bob Jones, News Channel 5. My name is Deborah Moore. I'm Senior Director for Compliance and Sport Medicine for the Ohio High School Athletic Association. It's our pleasure, in partnership with the Ohio Department of Health and the Department of Education, along with the Ohio Chapter of the American College of Cardiology and Nationwide Children's Hospital, to provide this educational video to our parents and young athletes on the topic of sudden cardiac arrest, which is the leading cause of death in young athletes of this age. So welcome. Whether you or your child is participating in an athletic activity organized by your school or by a group in your community, it is our goal that you will find this video useful and informative. is Dr. Naomi Cortez and I am the Associate Medical Director of Pediatric Cardiology and Electrophysiology at Nationwide Children's Hospital. I'm also the Medical Director of Project Adam Ohio. What is a sudden cardiac arrest? A sudden cardiac arrest occurs when the heart suddenly and unexpectedly stops beating, cutting off all blood flow to the brain and other vital organs. 
Sudden cardiac arrest is fatal if not treated immediately, most often by a defibrillator. What causes sudden cardiac arrest? The causes of sudden cardiac arrest can be divided into three categories. First, structural heart disease. This may or may not be present from birth and therefore is not excluded with one evaluation. Second, electrical heart disease. This occurs when the heart is formed normally, but there is a problem with the electrical system that controls the heartbeat. And third is situational. Situational causes include individuals who have completely normal hearts, but then either are hit in the chest with an object or develop an infection of the heart, causing a sudden cardiac arrest. Your family history can be an important warning sign of a high risk of a sudden cardiac arrest. Family history of premature death, sudden and unexpected, before age 50, because of heart disease in one or more relatives is concerning. Also be aware that sudden cardiac death may manifest as a suspicious drowning or a single car accident. One should think about the presence of a disability from heart disease in close relatives younger than 50. Family history of the following conditions may put your child at risk of sudden cardiac arrest. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, a thick heart, or dilated cardiomyopathy, a big heart, long QT syndrome, Marfan syndrome, or other rhythm problems of the heart. Certain symptoms can be warning signs of an impending sudden cardiac arrest. These symptoms should prompt you to have your child evaluated by a healthcare professional. They include one, chest pain or discomfort with exercise, two, unexplained fainting or near fainting, especially during or immediately after exercise. Fainting from dehydration does not typically occur during exercise. Three, unexplained tiredness or shortness of breath with exercise. And four, unusually fast heartbeats associated with exercise. Other reasons to be evaluated by a healthcare professional would be prior recognition of a heart murmur, high blood pressure, or prior heart evaluation by a physician. I'm Dr. Peter Aziz, a pediatric cardiologist here at the Cleveland Clinic. Despite everyone's best efforts, sometimes a young athlete will experience a sudden cardiac arrest. For those of you who have had any CPR training, you may recognize the term chain of survival. These are the links in the chain to help anyone survive a cardiac arrest. Depending on where a young athlete is participating in an activity, you may or may not have close access to an automated external defibrillator, or AED. Many, but not all, schools have AEDs. They may be near the athletic facility or may be close to the school office. Be aware of where you see them when you're at a sporting event. Many of you are not involved in school sports, but are involved in community sports. Take a look around to see if there are AEDs nearby. To review the chain of survival, if you witness a youth experiencing a sudden cardiac arrest, first remain calm. Panic and chaos are never helpful in these situations. The links to the chain of survival are 1. Early recognition. Assess the child for responsiveness. Does the child answer if you call his or her name? If no, then attempt to assess a pulse. If no pulse is felt or if you're unsure, call help, say someone dial 911. 2. Early CPR. Begin CPR immediately. 3. Early defibrillation, which is the use of an AED. If an AED is available, send somebody to get it. Turn it on, attach it to the child, and follow the prompts or instructions. If an AED is not available, continue CPR until EMS arrives. 4. Early advanced life support and cardiovascular care. Continue CPR until EMS arrives. Remember to trade places with other providers if available, so that you don't tire. We were doing good. My wife, myself, my oldest son Seth, who's 15, my youngest son Cole is 13. Cole was getting ready to have a uh, physical for 
football. And a heart murmur was detected via our family care provider. She immediately sent us to have further testing done. After all kinds of testing was done, it was determined he has hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Uh, changed our lives in a major way. No longer can play football, no longer can play baseball, no longer, no longer can drive a race car. Nothing with high intensity exercise. Um, what we found he could do is play golf, which was totally cool as far as his care provider was concerned. Um, he was allowed to do this. It's not a high energy sport. Um, it does keep him relatively fit. No issues, no problems. We were at his training facility on the north side of Columbus, just beginning a training program, and he went down. I saw him go down. Very scary. His instructor and I were there. She was monitoring his heart rate. He had a heartbeat, a pulse. It was okay to start with, and it became more and more faint. We decided it was time to get the AED. Uh, fortunately, when Cole was diagnosed with this disease, we were able via sources within our family to get an AED, our own personal one. I got the AED, we got it hooked up to him, and they chalked him. This little machine saved my son's life. If it wasn't for that, he wouldn't be here today. He was rushed to a children's hospital. The next day he had surgery to have an ICD implanted. So now he has his own onboard ICD. To where, hopefully, this won't ever happen again. But if it does, he's taken care of. Please encourage your schools, your coaches, your athletic facilities, all of those type of folks to ensure that they've got AEDs present, that they have personnel that are trained and knowledgeable, um, that they've taken and done drills, that they know what they will do if a bad situation ever arises. Because a 90% fatality rate with cardiac arrest is simply unacceptable. My name is Ann Conley, and I'm a licensed school nurse working at the Ohio Department of Health. Lindsay's Law was named for Lindsay Davis, who was crowned Miss Ohio U.S. International in 2011. She had been a classically trained ballerina until a diagnosis of the heart condition, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, ended her dream at the age of 17. Moving on, Lindsay developed a platform to support and bring awareness to cardiac-related charities and causes. What is Lindsay's Law? Lindsay's Law went into effect in 2017 to address sudden cardiac arrest in youth athletic activities. Youth covered under Lindsay's Law are all youth athletes 19 years of age or younger that wish to practice for or compete in athletic activities organized by a school or youth sports organization. Lindsay's Law is effective in all public and non-public schools in Ohio, as well as athletic activities including interscholastic athletics, any athletic contest or competition sponsored by or associated with a school. This includes cheerleading, club sports, and school-affiliated organizations, including non-competitive cheerleading. It includes all practices, interschool practices, and scrimmages. It's also in effect for all youth sports organizations, which are public or non-public entities that organize athletic activities for athletes aged 19 years or younger, where they pay a fee to participate or are sponsored by a business or non-profit organization. Lindsay's Law requires all youth athletes and their parents or guardians to review information about sudden cardiac arrest that is provided by the Ohio Departments of Health and Education. This video and accompanying handouts are the required information. After reviewing the information, both the youth athlete and the parent guardian will need to sign a form that says you have received this information. 
you will need to do this each year for each athletic activity in which the young athlete participates. My name is Jillian Keith, and I am a licensed school nurse working at the Ohio Department of Health. Before they participate in an athletic activity, all athletes under the age of 19 years and their parents must sign and submit a form saying they have received information about sudden cardiac arrest. If the young athlete has ever had fainting or passed out before, during or after athletic activity, then the youth must be evaluated and cleared before participation. The same is true if the youth's biological parent, sibling, or child has had a sudden cardiac arrest. Until those steps are taken, a young athlete cannot participate in practices, inter-school practices, scrimmages, or competition in their athletic activity. During an athletic activity, if the athlete faints or passes out, the coach must remove him or her from participation. The youth may not return until cleared by a health care provider in writing. Lindsay's Law lists the health care professionals who may evaluate and clear youth athletes either before participation or if they have been removed from play. If a young athlete needs to be evaluated, they can visit a physician, a certified nurse practitioner, a clinical nurse specialist, a certified nurse midwife, physician's assistant, or licensed athletic trainer. That person may refer the youth and family to another health care provider, such as a cardiologist, for further evaluation. Clearance must be provided in writing to the coach and sports official before the athlete can return to participation. There are a few forms we need to review with you. After watching this video, both parents and youth athletes must sign a form stating that they have received and reviewed the information about sudden cardiac arrest. You will need to do this each year for each athletic activity in which the youth participates. Parents and student athletes participating in interscholastic sports programs offered in Ohio's secondary schools that find the sudden cardiac arrest information form, which is included there. As we conclude this presentation, we wish all youth athletes safe, successful and enjoyable participation in their athletic activities. And now for our parent portion. This is called the parent seat and this piece will be um, geared just for you, the parent, the fan. In this seat, the pressure is high. And for this season, this is your seat. The National Federation of State High School Associations would like, like to thank you for supporting your child in learning positive, lifelong lessons by participating in interscholastic activities. As a parent, there are many feelings and emotions that you will experience during your student's participation in interscholastic activities. While watching your student participate, you can experience the entire emotional spectrum, from sheer joy to utter disappointment. At the same time, for students who are motivated to be part of a team, it can be an enjoyable and rewarding experience for everyone. Sitting in the parent seat requires thought and discipline. It is not an easy seat. The parent seat is a place where you and your student want to create enjoyable memories, not experiences filled with inappropriate language or unsporting behavior. The one who suffers most from these experiences is your child. Negative parent behaviors can be embarrassing to your student and damaging to your relationship as their biggest fan. This is the last thing you want. Here are 10 suggestions to help you with the emotions that arise in the parent seat. 1. Develop an awareness. Recognizing that you may be part of the problem in the stands is the first step to addressing it. This in itself can be challenging, as typically you are the last one to know if you are part of the problem. 2. 
understand the benefits. Recognize the benefits that participation in interscholastic activities provides your students. Interscholastic activities provide a platform that promotes fitness, the opportunity to be part of a team and community, can improve your students' confidence, and provides an opportunity to learn new skills and improve current skills. 3. Embrace the growth and development of your student. By participating in activities, your student will have many opportunities to learn life lessons that will help him or her as they transition into adulthood. Taking a hands-off approach at times can be difficult for parents, but also rewarding for both the student and the parent. It can allow the student to gain confidence and independence to deal with their own obstacles. And many times, this independence can be one of the most important challenges to strengthening trust in your relationship. Knowing that your student is struggling can bring some comfort because it is evidence that your student is on a path to adulthood. 4. Visualize yourself as a respectful spectator. Many studies indicate that the number one reason kids participate in sports and activities is to have fun. Please keep that top of mind and in perspective throughout the school year. Emphasize to your students that they should enjoy the experience and above all, have fun. Understanding and communicating this perspective can provide balance and support when it is needed the most and ensure a fun and enjoyable interscholastic experience for your child. 5. Consider exercising before the event. Exercising doesn't necessarily mean a 60-minute workout. A short walk, deep breathing, or a few stretching exercises may be helpful to relieve stress. It is also a proven fact that exercise can release endorphins that help you deal with stress. 6. Participate in a relaxing activity. Find something that you enjoy doing, such as reading a book or listening to music before the event. Relaxing before a game, competition, or other event may help provide a positive state of mind as you prepare to watch your child participate in their activities. 7. Take a break. If your emotions begin to escalate while in the stands, a brief timeout may help you reset your emotions. It could be as simple as taking a restroom break, a trip to the concession stand, or a short walk. 8. The 24-hour rule. If you ever feel compelled to confront a coach, take some time to collect your thoughts and allow your emotions to settle before you do. If after 24 hours you still feel compelled to address an issue, call and schedule an appointment. 9. Be responsible. Be responsible in your decision making. You are a role model and it is important to understand that not only is your child watching you, but so are other participating students. Be aware and set a good example for all of the young people in attendance. 10. Support your student. There are a lot of ways to let your student know that you are a supportive parent. Tell them that you love watching them participate or how proud you are of the sacrifices they make to be part of a team. Once again, focus on the fun. Be a good listener when your student needs you. Supporting them and understanding their feelings hopes, and dreams can help you build on your trusting and loving relationship. Be aware that you will experience many emotions while sitting in the parent seat. Realizing there are challenges that come with the territory is an important step in supporting your students' participation in interscholastic activities. Students learn so much from their experiences that only activities can uniquely provide. You want your student to enjoy being part of a team and community without having to worry about what you may say or do in the stands. When your student looks back on their high school experience, what do you want them to remember? The experience should be enjoyable for you, beneficial for your student, and hopefully provides an opportunity to build a closer bond with your child. That opportunity begins now, in the parent seat. That concludes our presentation today. We'd like to thank each of you for attending. We have a, um, we, we are looking forward to having an amazing year, an amazing season, and we look forward to hearing your comments and suggestions on how to continue to make AACS uh, athletics the best it can be. Have a great season, families.